and welcome back. Let's get you a perspective on the market action this week and maybe a preview to next week. Yannick No is uh, with Glen Devon King Asset Management. Yannick, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Good evening. Fantastic. Thanks for being with us. Um, obviously, this week has been uh, a fairly momentous one in, in many ways. Uh, tell me how you read the, the markets now and what's our, what's our investment strategy to be given uh, what we now know about the Fed's policy? Yes, I mean, all in all, it was a I mean, even if today the market is a bit, uh, a bit lower, all in all, it was a, it was a, good, a good week. Uh, we had some news from uh, mainly uh, in the U.S. I mean, uh, uh, Sunday night, we knew that Larry Summers was uh, not going to be a candidate. He was one of the most uh, hawkish candidates uh, around here. And obviously, uh, uh, on Wednesday, we had the, uh, the decision about uh, postponing uh, the tapering uh, from the Fed. It could be postponed until, for example, next month, like in, in October. Within Europe, we had some uh, quite good news from uh, both Germany and peripheral Europe. I mean, in Germany, we had on Tuesday the uh, uh, ZEW ex economic expectation that were much above expectation. I think it was at 49.6. It was expected to be at 45. In uh, Ireland, we had some positive uh, second quarter uh, GDP growth, plus 0.4%. And even in Greece, which usually is the country that uh, provides uh, a lot of uh, negative news, we had a small uh, decrease of unemployment from 27.4 to 27.1%. It's, it's very small decrease, but it's the first decrease in four years. Let's uh, stick with the Fed for just one moment. I mean, the markets yes. are happy that the, the Fed is going to continue to juice uh, the market, if you like, with uh, extra funds yes. for an indeterminate period. But are we not going to see a time when markets finally say, you know what, that's a good thing on one hand, but what it also tells us on the other hand is that the economy is not doing as well as we thought? Yes, I mean, I think the, the debate is the fact is can the global economy, and in fact, Western economy, can they grow with normal uh, policy and normal interest rate. And it, it's far from being certain. I mean, uh, the, uh, so that's everyone, a bad every country thing, right? in Europe and in states want the uh, real estate to recover. Uh, if, we can, if we see a sharp increase of long-term uh, interest rate, and it will be much more difficult for uh, people to, uh, to purchase house. So yes, it, it's, it's very true. And we know that it will, it will not continue. It can't continue uh, forever. It's just a matter of timing and in a matter of how slowly or how quickly uh, you can phase out this uh, quantitative but easing. That, but that's exactly the point. They can't phase it out. I mean, in stark terms, what the Fed told us this week is that the US economy is on life support and will continue to be there for a while. Yes, I mean, we had some news today. Uh, in fact, it was, uh, it, it was a very, very uh, tight uh, decision. I mean, there were no consensus at all uh, at the FOMC. And the decision was made for this month. But, I mean, personally, I think that the likelihood of uh, uh, 10 billion reduction of purchase in October is probably, uh, is probably pretty high. Mm -hmm. So we will see a tapering. I mean, it was announced since May. I think the, what was... Uh, uh, surprising this week is the fact that usually uh, the regulator and uh, the chairman of the Federal Reserve try to um, give, uh, you know, to direct ex expectation, to give some direction, and the market was led to believe that it will happen, and it didn't happen this All week. All right. Let's uh, turn to Germany. Are you convinced by that uh, positive sentiment we're seeing there? Well, I mean, the, uh, the German economy is, uh, is doing very, very well. I mean, we had some uh, number this week, but every recent number in terms of GDP, in terms of uh, industrial production, are pretty, uh, pretty positive. We have seen sign in Northern Europe, like in Finland or in Netherlands, of some weakness, but so far it's not been, uh, it's not been the case in Germany. I mean, the unemployment is still at 6.8%. Uh, the latest in industrial production was up 2.4%. Those are pretty, uh, pretty strong numbers. Where then are you advising your clients to be? US markets, European markets, yes. or emerging markets? Well, we still think, when we look at flows, we still see, uh, see uh, uh, quite a lot of outflow out of emerging market going back into Europe, either into uh, go uh, government bonds or corporate bonds, either in equity. But all in all, week by week, we see, uh, we see inflow in, uh, in the Eurozone, not because people are extremely enthusiastic about the uh, growth expectation in Eurozone. It's just that 
the most of uh, international investors were under uh, underweighted into uh, into Europe and the eurozone. So. All in all, I think in the short term, given the uh, Fed attitude and uh, probably a uh, uh, grand coalition in, uh, in Germany, I think it's, uh, it is positive for equity markets, which are trading in, uh, in Europe at a bit lower multiple compared to the States or in Japan, for example, all right. and uh, peripheral Europe uh, bonds, which is Italy, Spain, and maybe Portugal. Uh, just a quick word on Germany. You spoke of a grand coalition, uh, the election coming yes. up, of course. Do you think we'll see a grand coalition? Do you think there may be any change in Germany's economic policy under a new government? Well, uh, there's two things. Uh, obviously, I, I don't think the, what is important is the, what will be the score of the CDU, the CSU, of the, uh, of the opposition. I think what will be uh, important is what will be the score of the, uh, the coalition partner, the uh, Free Democrat Party, the FDP. Uh, they historically, to the, they tend to do better during the election than compared to the poll. Uh, last time around, they, I think they doubled what was expected of, of them. Nevertheless, in Bavaria last weekend, I think they polled 3.2 or 3.3 percent. So they will even struggle to keep into the parliament with this kind of uh, percentage. They need to go above 5 percent. So the CDU need the FDP to be strong enough for them to uh, keep the coalition alive. Having said that, uh, Germany have a long uh, history of a grand coalition. I mean, Angela Merkel uh, was running a coalition between 2005 and 2009, and it, it is compared to Italy, compared to other European countries, it's much more stable coalition. Mm. Uh, for Germany, I'm not sure it will change a lot of things. I mean, there is some small difference in terms of uh, taxation, in terms of uh, minimum salary, in terms of energy policy. I think it's more interesting for Europe. Uh, a grand coalition is usually seen as being more uh, positive for peripheral country and for the rest of Europe. And we have to keep in mind that usually in German policy, the, mind, the, uh, the junior coalition uh, party uh, usually decide who will be the uh, foreign mm. minister. So if we have a foreign minister from the FDP, it will rebalance a bit the situation that we have in the Eurozone or in the EU, where Angela Merkel so far is going more and more towards the uh, UK and leaving uh, France a bit on the side. So if we had, uh, if, we, if, uh, if the next uh, uh, foreign minister, German foreign minister, is from the, F the, uh, uh, from the socialists, from the, from the left, it might change a bit the, uh, the balance within right. the Eurozone. Yannick, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yannick No, is uh, joining us there from London. He's with, with Glendavon King, Asset Managers.